What's up, guys, and welcome back to the DualSense Podcast. This is episode 43. My name is Jason. I'm one of your co-hosts. I'm joined, as always, by my other co-host, Travis. Travis, what is Gucci this evening? God, not a whole lot, man. Just hanging out. Um, As our old college friend used to say, living the dream, which I hate, by the way, but, yeah, you know. (laughs) It sounds like you're dying the dream right now. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you faded. You faded pretty fast there. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm also not a fan of the of the living the dream saying. Um, you know, nobody's that nobody's that damn happy all the time. No. Let's just be on, let's just be honest. Anyway, Travis, we are a weekly podcast where you and I get together and discuss all of the week's news, rumors, new game releases, and a little bit more in the world of PlayStation. We post new episodes every Monday on all of the usual podcast services from around the world. And we also post our episodes on YouTube at the DualSense Podcast. And if you also would like to check out some of our game streams and clips, you can find us there as well. And finally, if you want to engage with us, you want to chat with us, whatever the case may be, you can find us on the Twitter at the DualSense Pod. That's where we be. So, Travis, let's let's get things started here. Talk to me about... uh, what you've been playing in the past week well played a little bit of beef uh, not much to report there other than uh my goalie broke his toe which oh, is, yeah. uh, i don't know how he did it like i had to pull him out of the game and i was on the other end of the field and um the ball like they kicked the ball out of bounds and then it it cut to him laying on the ground <laughs> so like i don't know that what, was it i don't know what happened i guess he like kicked the, the pole or something i don't know but anyway that was so what she wrote he's out for three months which seems like a just a lot you know what i mean it's like yeah you know, it's like robbing one bank nicely without a weapon and then getting 17 years like maybe we should get five i mean i don't know it just seems like a lot we had our first race of our um lsr um league group one lsd yeah uh lsr means lightning speed racing mm. So wait a second. So do you think that LSD stands for lightning speed drug? Then I never. You know what? That's a good question. I think you're onto something. <laughs> I'm sure that it doesn't, but maybe on the street it does. Know. Anyway, Let's sorry. L- LSR. Let's tweet tweet Joe Rogan. He'll probably know. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we were at uh, Laguna Sega. And we're using LM1P cars. Um, LMP1 cars. Sorry. And uh, those are the hybrid cars you see on Le Mans, The the one the fastest class. Qualified seventh, I was well off the pace, which I didn't even practice. Like I've been meaning to practice for like two weeks and I just never did. So I just showed up fifteen minutes before and ran like three laps with this car I'd never driven before. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna go do an endurance race. Um I qualified second to last. I ended up finishing sixth, but I, I spun mm. myself out four or five times. At least four no, four times I did a, a three sixty. I three sixty no scoped it back onto the track once, mm. which was pretty cool. And then yeah. um, aside from those five spins, I one time just drove, missed my breaking point and drove straight into the gravel. And mm-hmm. I still finished sixth. So, you know, I think I have potential. I think four might be my ceiling uh, in, in this league. I think I can get some fourths. My strategy was good, but like the, the top two or three guys are really fast and they're really consistent. Like the guy that won spun once and he still won. So he's very very quick um but part of that too is like the cars are different and and the cars are better at certain tracks because of the way they harvest energy for speed on the battery you 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 gain energy for boost when you're on the brakes and some of those cars are better on certain tracks it's kind of weird but it's how it works in real life so um maybe we'll get to a track where the audi is actually um you know a favorite i have a lot of power that's the thing you know you watch top gear jeremy clarkson would love it but anyway I thought six was pretty good. We in the, in, there's some highlights on YouTube. Just type in LSR racing and the last lap. But there was a pass for the win. It was pretty intense. The last probably nine or ten laps. I mean, they were going back and forth. It was pretty cool. 
Um, anyway, yeah, I'm gonna sh- I'm gonna I'm gonna share that link that you sent me. I just haven't done it yet. Cool. So, um, and then Jonah Jonah did the voiceover. Jonah is broom handle. If you're watching the race, he's it's his gamer tag. Yeah, I think he came That's second. A great, it's a great name. It's a great name. Uh, but Jonah Jonah does an awesome job with the voiceovers, and it's his league. He's put it together, so it's a uh, you know it's fun. We 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 had a good time. Let's see what else we throw in. Threw in some Battlefield. Um, I bought the BAR, which I really like. Mm. The BAR was great in the World War II also as well. But anyway, um, and also BAR Famous helped uh, Bonnie and Clyde escape jail. Clyde specifically escaped jail once. Oh, he was nice. On, he was on a chain gang and they had a BAR for him and he used that to escape. Um, anyway. <laughs> oh, Jesus. The, um, uh, the Ross MK3 or whatever it is. Uh-huh. I, I enjoy that sniper a lot. It's probably my favorite sniper right now. It's um, not, it's not any more damage or any less damage, but it, I feel like it's a much truer shot so far. Okay. Anyway, that was a blast. And then um, what else did we do? Um, zombie army? Yeah, we did. How far are we on that? I think we're on chapter three, maybe, maybe four mm. of nine. We finally died like from the zombies. Both of we us. did. I cranked the difficulty up a little bit. That's probably why. Yeah, I was going to say. Oh, yeah. yeah, we weren't dying, so that's probably a good call. Yeah. It was fun. We got to close off some portals. Um, we got to... The, those demon summoners? What are they called? <laughs> oh, those, those fucking guys. Commanders or something yeah, like the that. Yeah, commanders. See, that was a new wrinkle that I wasn't ready for. And I kept forgetting yeah. that I needed to kill them, so I was just killing all the minions. Yeah, it never stops unless you get them. Yeah, so that was that was a bit of a learning curve. But um watching mm-hmm. you watching you dismount the mounted machine gun and then mowing people down is hilarious. Like that's a fun perk. Yeah. Highly underrated. Highly underrated. Um I mm-hmm. love that game. It's just fun. Yeah. I enjoy it quite a bit. It's uh you know, it's a good it's very it's not very similar. It's similar to Battlefield just because of the time period and the weapons, but it's it's definitely a good change of pace and right. You know, I, I enjoy a good co op game. So mm-hmm. That, that's perfect too. What else you been playing? Anything? We threw in some enlisted, and um, I like it more than I did last week. Yeah, I'm still very confused by it though. Right. So I watched a, a Jack Frag's video today. We we we've been playing PPE. Apparently, there's a PvP mode that's different. That's just players. So you know the bots when you play PvP VE, the bots are not smart. You can kind of tell them where to go, but they don't really. I don't think I get, get get killed by bots very often. Right. Only if you get overwhelmed. Right. And the sniping on the game is just so good. Like if you if you flank somebody with the sniper, like you can take out a platoon. Like for Easy. real. And that's mm-hmm. what I'll I'll do love that about it. And um what was I using? I was using a machine gun that I really liked the other day too, but I can't remember what it was now. Mm-hmm. Um but I was going to town. I'd gotten like a quad kill with um my dynamite. Which, by the way, the dynamite, the thing about enlisted is like, it's so accurate. Like the weapons that you can use are right on. Um, the uniforms look right from what I've noticed. Um, the tanks look right. Um, although somebody was using a Sherman tank the way you don't use a Sherman tank last night, but or the other night, but that's fine. That was on Battlefield. Sorry. But anyway. Yeah. I, I feel like enlisted, they, they made an effort to really make it look authentic and feel authentic. Um it definitely sounds authentic. Oh God, yes, and that's the cool thing about it is like it has a little bit of arcadiness to it, mm-hmm. um, but then there's some realistic things like the sound and the, the destruction is kind of cool. And I really think those dynamite bundles. I, I'm curious if they really do that much damage. I don't really know for a fact, but when those mm-hmm. things go off, like you need to not be there. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's gonna blow a fucking crater. So, and I I just learned that. Like the machine gunner class can build sandbags and build a like a machine gun bunker. I didn't oh, know that shit. until today. Okay. And there's some other perks I didn't know about that I can't remember off the top of my head right now. But yeah, I don't know. I'd I'd like to try the other game mode just to see if it's if it's what the pacing is like. Yeah, we need to do that. I didn't even know that existed. It doesn't. It, in my defense, it does not lay things out well at all in the menus. So. Right. And then Jack Frag said too, like it's it's really a computer game, and right. guys that have played computer games for a long time are, are used to seeing games like this, and the consoles haven't been able to, you know, have them for whatever reason. If it's power or 
you know, it take up too much space, whatever the reason may be. And we're finally getting to the point where we can do that. So I like the, the I kind of hope we get more games in this vein. I think, it, I think it has a lot of potential. Yeah. It's, it is only on PS5. As far as I know, it's not on PS4. So that kind of makes sense. But uh, what else have you been playing? Anything or is that it? No, that's about it. Uh, then, um, you know, just playing with all the women's hearts. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Well, I also played FIFA this week, Battlefield 5, and uh, Zombie Army 4. Nothing really different to report there from you other than I got my shit pushed in last night on Battlefield. I was like 3-18 and 18 in one game. I don't know what was <laughs> wrong with me. Uh, but other than that, I am I do have to report that for about the fifth time, at least, I am playing Days Gone again. I I've been I have such a love hate relationship with this game like I'm on so on and off with it and mm-hmm. I just <laughs> what made me re-download it again like I said for about the fifth time is just all of this uh discussion all the you know starting with the Bloomberg story last week about mm-hmm. Sony Bend being you know supporting Naughty Dog and they declined the sequel to the game and this and that and I would I, I would say the game is above average. Like to me, it's like it's probably a seven, uh, around a seven. So about where the Metacritic is at. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people. Which this is with any game. You know, there are people who think it sucks. There are people. There are other people who think it's you know a ten, and mm-hmm. that's fine. I, I mean, I get that. But for me, it's it's above average is what I would say. Um, it's a very good looking game. I'll say that it. You know, and th- this has been the case, you know, the last time I played it on the five, but it looks better than some other PS5 games. And I think what my favorite part about it is, is maybe the motorcycle and how it's kind of like your base or whatever. And you, you know, it's like the, a mobile dri- base. Yeah. And then the driving of it is pretty satisfying. They worked on that quite a bit. And, you know, I don't, I don't hate the combat, but the combat is missing something. And I think what it, I think what the problem is is maybe the weight of it. Like sometimes when you shoot zombies or people, like you you can feel the weight of it, and other times you really can't. So, and then the thing, the part where it really suffers, in my opinion, at least so far, is the story. I mean, the story's fine, but it's it's kind of ham fisted, like kind of corny in places. And with all that said, the the thing, the last thing I'll say about it to wrap up is similar to what I said. Uh, last week when we were talking about the Bloomberg article article and even though it was a profitable game I think they've said they've sold around 7 million copies or something like that like I still understand why Sony said no to the sequel I mean I get it it's Mm -hmm. Sony's not really in the business of making sixes and sevens right you know like right they're not they're not going to do that they're not going to spend 80 to 100 million dollars to make a six or a seven so Mm -hmm. That and I, I think that, I mean, they don't need two zombie games. You know, they have The Last of Us, and they don't need two third-person zombie games. And The Last of Us is obviously the superior game. So, I get it. I mean, they took them off of it and got them on a new IP, and we're going to talk about that, right? Well, here in just a little bit. What's funny to me hearing you say that you downloaded it again for the fifth time is it's like you keep going back to the same girl, and everybody's like, "Come on." Like, yeah, I want to understand. Like, I, I it's like I want to understand. Yeah, she's got like yeah, a nice personality can't. sometimes, but she's kind of basic. She only wants to go to Starbucks. Uh, she probably has some dad <laughs> issues, but you know, it's great to ride her yeah. around town. <laughs> Just like that. Just like that. It's I want I want to understand what it is about the game, but right now it's it's above average. It's mid, as the kids say. It's very mid. Anyway, let's get into the news now. It's time we've. We've gone on and on here. Number one, Travis. Sony released the first major PS5 firmware update this week, featuring a number of new features and tweaks. The first big change is that players can now use external USB drives to store PS5 games. Although PS5 games cannot be played from external drives, it does free up valuable hard drive space for players, as well as being faster to transfer the game back and forth rather than re-downloading or reinstalling from a disc. Sony did say they're still working on the internal storage expansion feature and that an update is coming soon. Also new is the cross-generational share play, meaning PS4 and PS5 players can utilize the share play feature through the party feature. Uh, 
allowing PS4 players to try PS5 games and vice versa. The cross-gen share play also allows players to give a friend a virtual second controller to play co-op games together. Among, among a myriad of other changes are improved HDR features, automatic save data, data cloud sync, an improved game pass, uh, game page, game base, I think is what I was trying to type there, an improved <laughs> game base. <laughs> Here we go. You guys better buckle up. <laughs> an improved game base. The ability to adjust indiv- individual players' chat volume, pre-downloading game updates, the ability to customize your game library, and a new trophy stat screen. And finally, the PlayStation app is also getting an update, Travis, allowing players to join multi- multiplayer sessions on PlayStation 5 directly from the app, as well as manage their PlayStation 5 storage and compare trophies with friends. So, there's uh, quite a few things going on there. Do you have any thoughts about it? I don't even know if I've ever used SharePlay, to be honest. I forgot it existed. Right, I don't ever use it. Yeah. I know that you can change it to where it doesn't... You can tell the PS5 like what level of trophy you want to take pictures or videos of now, which mm-hmm. is nice because like it, it's annoying that I'm going to end up having to delete all of these bronze trophy pictures I have at some point. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, for Because I'm going to need storage at some point. It is nice that we can do these, you know, the USB drive to the to, to the external thing to, you know, move games over, move them back. That's a nice touch. Um, I'm not surprised we can't play them off of them. I think there was some people on social media that were, I guess, surprised that that wasn't an option. I don't really know why that was surprising to them. They're going to want us to buy their right. external hard drive. Of course, it doesn't work. But anyway, mm-hmm. aside from those things, the thing that I think is probably the and this is a very personal answer, but I like that I could customize other players' chat volumes. Yeah, I'm too fucking loud, huh? Well, no, you're not bad, but sometimes people get in the parties and they're just like, like sometimes Jacob would get in the party and I just couldn't hear him. Yeah. It didn't matter how loud he made his mic. And he kept saying, I'm turning the mic up or I'm turning it. And it never made a difference for me. So it's like, yeah, now I can play with it on my end and that's nice. Um, I don't have to, you know, then I can say something to him because like, what are the odds that somebody's over there playing with it? I have no idea. Maybe they don't give a shit. So I do like that. And the um, automated, 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 the automatic uh, cloud sync uh, is nice because I've never, I never do that manually. So this takes that out of my hands. Yeah. Same, same. You know, it's a big update. Let me, I'll say that first of all. Right. It's, they've, they've updated a lot of things. Made a lot of tweaks, a lot of changes, which is cool. A lot of people were complaining about about some of these things, obviously. And honestly, a lot of us were wondering when they would ever update the PS5. The thing that I think is uh, most appealing to me is probably the ability to manage my storage from the PlayStation 5 for, you know, the next time that I delete Days Gone and want to download it for the sixth time. Um, the other, the other thing is that apparently now, uh, which I've already turned it on, which is cool. Like if there are games that don't use HDR for some reason, it'll, I, it'll, it will automatically turn it off. So it doesn't look weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, it'll detect that and vice versa. And then like you, uh, I never individually upload my cloud save data. So it's awesome that they're going to automatically do that. As a matter of fact, if you remember when we were playing the other day, I told you I was <laughs> trying to, to upload my save data to the cloud. And how long did I tell you it was going to take? It said nine, 99 plus hours. Right. Yeah. Because I've never done it. And I didn't know it wasn't doing it automatically. That's bullshit. So <laughs> right. it was like when you when we used to have DSL, you know, and you'd be downloading a game and it would it would tell you like estimated time, two hours, and that little leaf would be going across. Yeah. Dude, the, back in those days, like you literally... And I mean, I think most of, most of the people that listen to our show are, are our age, so they all understand this. But you know, if you wanted to download a game back then, you like you better have something else planned to do. Like start it, and then like go to dinner, and like maybe bed. see a go to see a go to bed, go see a movie, and come back, and like then it'll be ready. Like <laughs> that's yeah. the way it used to be. Not not like thirty minutes or whatever, like it yeah. is now. But some of those games were so big you could start the download, and it would be done by the time Rapture happened. Yeah, there were some like on 360 and even PlayStation. I remember that like I let download multiple like multiple days, uh, <laughs> like for over the weekend or whatever. Mm-hmm. And anyway, we live in a much different time now. But uh, it's a it's a big update, and I'm sure there's something in here for everyone. 
that uh, they'll enjoy or that, that they're glad and thankful to have. So many, first of many, the first of many. Number two, Travis, an anonymous former PlayStation employee took part in an Ask Me Anything session on the Vita Reddit page over the weekend, meaning last weekend, and it turned out to be a treasure trove of insider information, including confirmation of some years-long rumors. The person's employment was verified by Reddit, and the full AMA is worth reading for us PlayStation nerds, but some of the highlights included confirmation that the internal power struggle over control of the PlayStation brand has been ongoing for more than a decade. The American arm of PlayStation was able to seize control of the company from the Japanese side in the end, with some notable battles being the relocation of PlayStation headquarters to California, the closure of Japan Studio, which just happened recently, and making the DualSense controller use the X button as the default confirm function worldwide. Perhaps the most notable highlight was the former employee revealing that the following that following the 2011 hack of the PlayStation Network, which shut down the service for 76 days, Sony was terrified of getting into a similar situation in the future, and once the Vita firmware began getting hacked in 2016, their mindset changed from allowing it to be a low-maintenance passive source of income to actively killing the platform. So, some interesting mm-hmm. things there. Mm-hmm. There, was, there was way more than this, but these are just some of the big ones. So, any any thoughts? I can't believe that the Americans squashed out the Japanese in another struggle again. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's Just, only taken like 80 years. Yeah, we got bored again, so we had to smash them. Um, anywho, the thing I thought was really, really interesting about this, well, it's two things really. I, I just It's fascinating to me that this X button, circle button thing is such an issue. I know. It's like it's really not that big of a deal. If they would have came out and said it did it the other way around, I'd have been like, okay. <laughs> right like, yeah sure i can either remap it or i'll figure it out like not a big deal yeah we, i mean like in sim racing i you know we i remap buttons all the time because it's more convenient for you know where i want it on the wheel or where i can see it so it, none of that is sacred to me so that's interesting that it's such a big deal mm-hmm. but following that i love that you know the vita firmware getting hacked is what killed the platform i remember like you know the vita being this thing handheld thing it was really you know it was a cool thing um it seemed like everybody liked it and then it just kind of has been slowly slipping into the ether and there's been lots of rumors why but it's fascinating that this insider this is the the main reason why is because they were so embarrassed by the time they got shut down for three months or whatever it was yeah that is just fascinating to me yeah so in regards to the vita it it really sucks that if not the main reason, one of the biggest reasons that we don't have a Vita anymore or, we, or it really, you know, telled off there at the end after about midway through the life cycle, it was because of hackers. <laughs> and I, I remember when, you know, it was a thing that the Vita could be hacked and jailbroken, you know, like, like cell phones yeah, could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, so people were put like, I mean, you still, you can still do it today because they've quit updating the firmware on Vita, but they would jailbreak them and then they would put like these emulators on it. And the people were playing, right. you know, Super Mario, like all kinds of shit on Vita. Like it's just crazy, the stuff. And there's even these things now you can get on eBay where you can, you can, it's, you can put an SD card, a micro SD card in it. And it's inside like an adapter that fits the Vita memory card. So you can basically put like a 500 gigabyte SD card, put it in the adapter and it, put it in the Vita and then jailbreak it and download like every game. <laughs> so that that yeah that happens i don't do that and i don't recommend any, anybody do that because uh, this guy also said that sony knows anybody who is pirating games or who has a hacked vita like they have they have like the the list they have the, the shimmer list yeah they have the in their technology they have it built in you know the, the heat mapping or the telemetry or whatever the tracking they know exactly who has done it and who is doing it and they not that they will not that they would but they may you know they may decide to ban your account one day if they're mm-hmm. feeling like real assholes, real Mick assholes. But um, the other thing, I guess, about the Vita that uh, this guy said that I thought was interesting was that in 2011, when they got hacked, which I remember that because SOCOM 4 
had mm-hmm. come out on the PS3. Do you remember this? Yeah, like basically killed it, didn't it? <laughs> it, it killed SOCOM 4. The, the the PlayStation Network outage, absolutely. It killed the franchise. It killed SOCOM 4 and it killed the franchise and mm-hmm. it killed the studio. Because after that, Zipper Interactive made Unit 13 on the Vita and then that was it. They were closed down by Sony. It used to be a first party studio. Uh, the other thing about that is that when that hack happened, this guy said that apparently that's the reason why we got the proprietary memory cards for Vita as opposed to, you know, an SD card Hmm. because Sony was so worried that people would be able to put an SD card in the Vita with, you know, software on it and hack these things and then have a backdoor into their network and they would have to go through this all again. Mm -hmm. So that PlayStation, so again, hackers in 2011, already put the wheels in motion to kill Vita because it made Sony design the thing in a way that it couldn't be hacked or it would be very difficult. And then they ended up doing it anyway. So, (laughs) and then I guess that was the point they realized they had lost the battle and they just gave up on it. So, well, two, two things about, I wanted to point out, you'd think that it's just, it's just bizarre to me that these companies as big as Sony still have issues with hacking. I don't know much about hacking to put that out there. And I feel like it's kind of a thing where the hackers are just so far ahead of the security companies, um, kind of like in the 30s, yeah. like, you know, where like the cops were so far behind the robbers when it came to like surveillance yeah. and weapons and cars and stuff. I feel like maybe we're in the 30s of of this, but mm-hmm. that that's just so strange to me that they can't create something that's either unhackable. And even when they do make something that they try to make unhackable, it basically makes it a worse piece of hardware. The software, yeah. it's, it's so strange to me. I don't know all the, I don't know all the details. Obviously we don't, but it's just so strange to me that that's an issue we still have. Yeah. And then the other thing is I remember people like jailbreaking three sixties. Yeah. My cousin had one where like he didn't play online, but mm-hmm. he had, he had basically jailbroken his three sixty and he had all kinds of shit on it. Yeah. And like multiple yeah. of those hard drives you could pop on and off and they'd have different things on them. Like one was full of movies, one was full of games. Like, Oh yeah, you look like couch co-op though. See, that's that's not any fun for me. <laughs> no, absolutely not. So the last thing that I'll say about this, backing up a little bit in terms of you know Amer- the American part of PlayStation taking basically uh, strong arming the brand away from Japan. I mean that I understand why you know I guess the Japanese part of the company is pissed off, but at the end of the, at the end of the day, the United States, North America in general is the biggest uh, video game market in the world. So, you know, it's it, it, it would be like, I don't know, it would be like Chevrolet going and being in Finland instead of, you know, America. Like, it just doesn't make sense. So I, I, that's the last thing I'll really say about that. But anyway, thank you hackers for killing my beloved Vita. Number three. Video game industry sales analysts, the NPD Group, released their March report on Friday. The big takeaway, Travis, is that the PlayStation 5 is now the fastest selling console in U.S. history, not just in dollar sales, as we have reported before, but now in units sold as well. The top 10 best selling games on PS4 and PS5 also for the month were number one, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, number two, Spider Man Miles Morales, which was fifth on the overall bestseller list number three on playstation was outriders four was assassin's creed valhalla five was madden nfl 24 or 21 jesus i'm in i'm in a time (laughs) i'm in a time machine i am i've got my time machine let's see six was call of duty modern warfare seven is minecraft eight was ghost of tsushima nine was nba 2k 21 and 10 was mortal Kombat 11 so what do you make of it First two things that jump out to me is um, Assassin's Creed. It's so strange to me that I read an article the other day. I, I meant to send it to you, but they were basically saying that the franchise is dead. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, I meant to send that to you. So I thought that was an interesting take. Um, I, yeah. I, it was kind of it wasn't clickbait, but like at the end of the article, I felt like they wrote that just to get people to come and, and read their articles. Yeah, it's just an interesting take to me. And then you see it fourth on the list, and it's going to be here. At, on the top 10 until the next one comes out. And it's just how this works. Yep. Outriders being at three at first, I was surprised, but then I realized people just want something different. 
Yeah. So that's why it's there. I don't think it really speaks to its quality or its mm-hmm. lack of quality per se. Um, but we'll that's see. We'll, we'll see next month. You know, when when we get Returnal, I'm sure that'll be in the top three. Uh, I'd be surprised if it wasn't. I don't even think Iowa Outriders will be in the top ten next month, or you know what I mean. After we get through April, mm-hmm. well, I guess that was show up in May. <sighs> anyway, um, other than that, I love that Ghost of Tsushima is still up there. I wonder if the movie talk is helping it kind of stay in the top ten. Uh, so I guess a couple. I have a couple thoughts too. First of all, you make a great point about Outriders. It's it's number three because look at look at the rest of the list. Nothing on that list has come out this year. <laughs> it's, right. I mean, literally no, uh, nothing other than Outriders. So it just goes to show you there's a big drought right now in new games. So people are starved for new content. And I mean, Outriders is a decent game. Uh, I mean, to be fair. So I understand. But Outriders would not be number three uh, if it weren't the state of the industry, so to speak, to, I mean, to be in this drought, really. Spider-Man Miles Morales on the, at fifth overall on the uh, bestsellers list across all platforms is pretty crazy. And I saw something else today. I should have wrote this in here, but Spider-Man Miles Morales has now outsold both Ghost of Tsushima and The Last of Us Part Two, which is insane because both of those sold, you know, 13, 12, 13, 14 million. Co- so it's yeah. over probably 15 million copies. Yeah. Spider-Man has a lot of staying power, though. Spider Man's a big IP, and that's right. a big one. For, that's a big one for Sony to hang on to, and you know, for you know, in, for Insomniac to to have, and for PlayStation to have Insomniac uh, games. So, kudos to those guys. And then the last thing I want to say, well, two more things really about uh, you, you mentioned Returnal. So, the interesting thing about Returnal is it's only going to be on the market for one day in the month of April the launch day okay so when we get the april npd report if returnal is not in the top even though it's only one day if returnal is not in the top 10 on this list for best-selling playstation games it's in trouble it didn't do well (laughs) even even just the one day if it's not on this list it that's not a good sign in my opinion now i could be wrong maybe it won't be there in april but maybe it'll show up in may it, it probably most certainly will show up in May, but in my opinion, it needs to be there on on April's. Even if it's number ten, like it should be there. But we'll see. People are really, I mean, at least on Twitter, which Twitter is not real life, but people are really turned off by the seventy dollar price tag. So we'll see. And then the last thing I want to say is that the PlayStation Five is being the being the fastest selling console, not now just in dollar amount, but actual units sold. I mean, after everything that we had to say about the Bloomberg article last week and really after everything Bloomberg had to say about PlayStation, I guess, you know, I guess PlayStation's not doing too bad. They must not be in in too bad of a place. And what they're doing has to be speaking to somebody because everybody's buying these things, right? Right. So much for the shortage if they've sold the most units. Yeah. That doesn't really line up either. Yeah. That's the other thing is that. Like we've talked about before, if they had more supply, just imagine how many units they would have sold. Number four, Naughty Dog co-president Evan Wells spoke recently at the Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences Game Makers Notebook Series. Jesus, Great name. Out, That's a cool name. Mouth- <laughs> those, those guys name all those bullshit games, too. <laughs> it's a mouthful. Oof. And Mr. Wells shared a few interesting insights on what is going on behind the scenes at the PlayStation Studio. For starters, Wells shared that the team d- does indeed have multiple projects in development, stating, quote, we don't have two projects that have several hundred people on them. We have one and then some that are in pre-production or maybe just creeping out of pre-production, but we'll have to wait until the main focus has completed before we move everybody off of that project, end quote. Wells also nixed the idea of Naughty Dog making another entry in the Uncharted series, which he said the studio would not have the quote-unquote creative spark to make. And finally, Wells also shared that the developer canned a PlayStation Portable version of Jack and Daxter in favor of moving to full production on PlayStation 4's The Last of Us. So, Hmm. some interesting things there. What do you think? Can you imagine being on the PSP version of Dak and Daxter and then you get moved to The Last of Us? Right. It's a hell of a right. jump. That's a, that's a big fucking spectrum change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So 
what's funny is like all the stuff I've heard about Naughty Dog is like, oh, they have two things going. They have two IPs. And the way this is worded makes it sound like they 100% have one IP and then they have maybe multiple other mm-hmm. ideas that could fall into that second IP. So mm-hmm. I wonder, here's what I wonder about that. So like in, in, in like NASCAR, you have to have a charter to race in, in the, in the cup or the Xfinity series. So like a, a charter is like a, a ticket that says you, you're allowed, you know, to have a car. Okay. Just, just like when like in the NBA expands, the owners vote to give you a franchise. Uh, that's what's oh, the same okay. thing. It's the same idea. So I wonder if, if, They've basically been given a quote unquote charter for two IPs. They have one that they're a hundred percent on. They're like, this is our Dale Earnhardt IP. And then they're playing around with some other ideas to see what which one they really like to slot into that second one. And they could bank those other ones for another time or maybe use those as inspiration for something else. I wonder I wonder if that's how that goes, because I keep every time I read about them, it's always two. They have two new things mm-hmm. coming out, right? But I would I would love to know what these other pre productions are. Yeah, I think you made a lot of great points and you know, we've we've talked about how we think that all of the or at least I have talked about how I think all the first party studios are working on two projects simultaneously. Right. And but if you look at his comments to your to your point, they at least have three, it sounds like, in production, if not more, because he says we have one and then some that are in pre-production. He doesn't say we have one and then another. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He says right. some. So that makes me think that they're working on something and then they have other stuff in the pipeline, like mm-hmm. you said. Now, the other thing is that I didn't include this either, but Jason Schreier made it went on a went on a podcast or a YouTube interview or something to clarify his Bloomberg article, which he's pretty much backed down a little bit. From all the shit that he reported. Uh, Why report it, dude? Don't write the article. Yeah, he backed down. He's like, I'm not saying that PlayStation's headed down a bad path or that they're doomed. He applied that shit. And he said, I'm not saying that PlayStation should, or that Naughty Dog shouldn't make The Last of Us and yada, yada. Like, he pretty much backtracked about half the story. Like, bro, you you write with tone. You write with tone. You, it's possible. You, You write with bias. Like, the tone of your article implied that these things were not good and that things weren't looking good. So either you didn't write it well or you knew what you were doing and, and you got shit for it. So now you're backtracking either way. Mm-hmm. That's sorry. Wow. That's or uh, he, yeah. That's, he best case scenario. He read the room wrong. Yeah. And, and wrote, well, wrote a negative article and then people freaked out and he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, right. He's a good enough writer to know what he's doing. He, he's not fooling anybody. Yeah. He, I don't know. So in general, in general, he is a negative person. He's kind of an asshole. So it's not surprising he, that he wrote an article that has a negative tone. I get it, but you yeah. can't be surprised when people call you out on things. That's how the world works. He really is negative. His articles are mostly negative. His books that he writes are mostly well. I haven't read them, so I can't pretend to to know. But he he comes across like his books are mostly negative about how it's. You know, it, you wouldn't believe how how games get made and yada yada. But anyway, I'm off on a tangent. So back to Naughty Dog. It seems that they're working on three projects at least. So back to what I, to my point with Jason Schreier. He he said apparently in this whatever interview or whatever he did that mainly the main reason why Naughty Dog is is making The Last of Us a remake of it and that's real that's happening is because their other so they're working on factions for The Last of Us, the uh, part two. They're making the multiplayer game. So we know that's one thing, but that doesn't take, you know, 200 people or 300, whatever people, how many ever people they have at Naughty Dog. So they have, some, they have a team working on that. And then they have another, they have another game in pre-production, like you were saying. So apparently it seems like that's a new IP. It's not Uncharted, obviously, based on his comment. And it doesn't seem like it's The Last of Us. It seems like it's going to be something else. Okay, so because they're in pre-production, they're basically just coming up with the ideas and the story, right? So that's just the creative people, the writers doing that. So they have to, they have all these other people who make the game, engineers, designers, whatever. They have to put them to work on something. So they've put them to work making a remake of The Last of Us for PlayStation 5. So that they basically have something to do is what he was saying. And also to get them familiar with working on the PlayStation 5 for whatever with for whatever game that they're working on in pre-production. It makes great sense. It's He never mentioned that in his article. So yeah, say, say, say that shit. That's perfect insight. Like, 
gosh damn it i don't know anyway, yeah not so. not everything the the sky isn't always falling and I, and yeah people get stuck on that because it sells it sells you know it's like if we did a podcast about murder it would be so much easier to get listeners yeah exactly for whatever reason it's just how it is uh and that's fine right. i don't know it, 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 he just sometimes he just exhausts me yeah i like that's just as no that's just as newsworthy as everything else that he wrote in his article i mean <laughs> right. re- report that shit too. make make it another article if you want to you write one a month anyway chief like I don't know. <laughs> like, a lot. He could have done a long form thing. Like he, I mean, his article was long. Yeah. But he could have made it a long, make a note, write a novella. If you've got all this, like you've got, if you've got have a notebook or the notes from shit, just like that's newsworthy too, man. Don't tell one part of the story. Like anyway. So nevertheless, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Number five, Travis Publisher, or Publisher as I have here, and developer Epic Games announced a new round of funding that netted them a cool $1 billion from investors, including another $200 million injection from Sony. In a press release, Sony boss man Kenichiro Yoshida said, (laughs) quote, (laughs) he said, quote, Epic continues to deliver revolutionary experiences through their array of cutting edge technologies that support creators in gaming and across the digital entertainment industry. We are excited to strengthen our collaboration and to bring new entertainment experiences to people around the world. I strongly believe that this aligns with our purpose to fill the world with emotion through the power of creativity and technology, end quote. This is a second cash injection that Sony has given Epic Games after making a similar $250 million investment in the company just less than a year ago, Travis. What do you make of it? The the publisher, you mean? Um... Yeah, the, the publisher, yeah. That's a that's one of my favorite um, superheroes is the publisher. <laughs> uh huh. So, what Epic is known for what Gears of War and Fortnite. Mm-hmm. So when I first read this and I was sitting on it, I was you know, Kenichiwa says, you know, it's a revolutionary experience, and I'm like, like revo- like revolutionary experience, like that's a that's a that's a strong phrase. Like, are we just blowing smoke? you know, up Epic's mm-hmm. ass. We just gave them, you know, they just got a cool billion dollars. We better make them feel good. Yeah. You know, I guess Fortnite is, uh, I think it's fair enough to call that revolutionary. I think that really opened the platform up, that kind of platform game. Yeah. I think yeah. that's fair enough. Um, I don't think that Gears of War necessarily follows in suit with that, but yeah, God, it's just so much freaking money. It's in, and I guess what makes it so valuable is all these um, microtransactions, I presume. Mm-hmm. And, and the game the, the so Fortnite, you know we've talked about our before our issues with like warzone how you can like not see anybody for 30 minutes and then you know like mm-hmm. that video i sent you of that guy that jumps out of the helicopter and is like bouncing off of trees with his yeah, parachute and then he yeah. spins around and, and like domes a guy it's like i'm not okay fuck that right but Fortnite does seem to match up with kind of like the kids attention span Sure. And they do a really good job of, um, you know, incorporating characters and they have all these crazy ass colors um, that kind of appeal to kids, which is my only issue with uh, with Dirt 5 was all the stupid neon colors we had. I felt like that wasn't true to the game, but whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, God, a billion dollars is fucking mind blowing. You know, just just to be fair, it's a billion dollars total that they've gotten, but they've got 200 million this time from Sony, but they've gotten all right. this happen. Yeah, but they've gotten almost half a billion from Sony, from Sony in the in the last year. Uh so I my thoughts are that this has to do this has to do more in my opinion has to. I mean, this is the only way this makes sense with the fact that the that Epic Epic's technology is used a lot now in film uh on movies like Avengers and things like that as far as like rendering Instead of like rendering like CGI stuff, you know, right? So Epic is used. People license Epic's uh, Unreal Engine or whatever other technology that they have to use in film for those purposes a lot. So I'm wondering if Sony wants this relationship partially due to, to the technology that they can use in the film division, and I don't know that that's that can't be worth half a billion dollars. They, I think that maybe they also are working on something with Unreal Engine for video games. Right. I don't. I don't think this is enough money to make Unreal Engine Five, which is the next version of it, 
it's supposed to be out this year. I don't think that this is enough money to make it exclusive to PlayStation. There's no way. And I don't even know that Epic would do that. But I'm wondering, There's there's got to be something with almost half a billion dollars. It's got to be both, so, right? That, that's the most logical. Yeah. I don't know if Sony is going to get like special tools for Unreal Engine 5. Are they going to, are all, this, this won't happen either, but I'm just speculating, are all Sony first party studios going to be using Unreal Engine 5 in the future instead of proprietary engines like Decima with uh, Gorilla and Horizon and stuff? I can't imagine that's the case, but there's something going on. We don't know the full story is what I'm trying right. to say. So, Well, maybe we Jason Shark wrote a shitty article about it. <laughs> Jason probably knows for all we know, and he won't right. report it because he's, he doesn't, he's probably got notes on it and it's not, you know, he doesn't give a shit enough to tell us. Anyway. I'd love, I would love for him to hear this and get mad and tell us how dumb we are. Yeah. Well, that one time, uh, we blew up his Twitter, but anyway, Number six, Travis, we also have a bunch of news nuggets. First nugget here, Resident Evil Village publisher Capcom announced a new demo for the game coming to PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 on April the 17th. So probably by the time that you're hearing this, you'll be able to download it or play it. Also, the game will run in 4K at 60 frames per second on the PlayStation 5 and 900p at 45 frames per second on the PS4. Website Push Square reported that Square Enix is being looked at by several potential buyers, according to Bloomberg Japan. However, Square Enix later denied the acquisition rumors altogether in a public statement. HBO's The Last of Us has cast Gabriel Luna to play Tommy in the series. Luna is best known for Terminator, Dark Fate, and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. PlayStation Plus subscribers whose membership will not lapse prior to the PlayStation Store closures on PS3 and Vita, will not be able to outright purchase any games that they have claimed through PlayStation Plus, losing access to the digital versions of those games altogether. So I know that's kind of confusing. I want to clear that up. So for instance, as a PlayStation Plus member right now, if there is anything that I've claimed on Vita or PlayStation 3 and my membership does not expire before the Vita store closes, for instance, on August 27th. Right now, if I try to go to the store on Vita, it's going to tell me that I own the game because I have claimed it on PlayStation Plus. So, if my membership then later lapses, and then I will not have access to that game because I would, I will no longer, the store will not exist. So I won't be able to go back and buy that because I'm no longer a PS Plus subscriber. But I'll, the store is gone, so I can't buy it. But right now I can't buy it either because it thinks that I own it from PlayStation Plus. So basically what I'm saying is that you'll lose access to those games. Uh, and unless you just keep your PlayStation Plus membership in perpetuity. As long as you don't plan on ever getting rid of PlayStation Plus, you're good to go. So, just an FYI. Push Square also reported, Travis, that Aloy from the Horizon series will be, will be making her Fortnite debut in a limited time event, and I think she might already be live uh, on there. Not sure, but possibly. The upcoming next entry in the Bioshock series may be an open-world game based on new job listings. Several Ubisoft games will see their servers go offline this year, including Rainbow Six Vegas and Ghost Recon Future Soldier 2 Classics. Travis, Classics. Monster collecting game Tim Tim has received a new PS5 update that adds support for activity cards and and new Tim Tim. Wait, what? About that? What does that mean? And new Tim Tim? They got new Tim Tim. They got new new monsters. Sorry. Yeah, they got they got new Pokemon. Also, Push Square reported that Days Gone Two would have had a shared online universe with co-op play if the pitch had been greenlit, according to former game director Jeff Ross. Simulation game YouTubers Live 2 will make its way to PlayStation consoles sometime later this year. That sounds so stupid. <laughs> Magical mask making virtual reality game. Which one sounds more stupid, Travis? Mask Maker will launch on PlayStation VR on April 20th. So maybe by the time you're hearing this. CD Projekt Red had a record high revenue of $562 million in 2020 thanks to Cyberpunk 2077. The previous high mark for CD Projekt was $210 million in 2015 when The Witcher 3 launched. So they doubled. More than doubled. half a billion in this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, guys, yeah, they don't give two shits no, that, CD, that Cyberpunk was a 
It was a dumpster fire. Yeah, I mean, hey, they're, they're lying dead. pays off. Just mislead everybody, take their money, and be like, yeah, it's not really a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> yeah, it's God. Anyway. Website PlayStation Lifestyle reported that a new job listing for an online gameplay designer at PlayStation's London studio confirms that they are indeed working on a new AAA PlayStation 5 game for a brand new IP. This is very interesting, Travis. These are the guys who have historically made VR games for PSVR, but now they're, it appears they're probably working on two games as well. One, mm-hmm. one is this game, and the one's probably a VR game as well. I think I would, it'd be I would sweet guess. to see their perspective. And it would be. Um, it sounds like it's going to be online, so that's exciting. I wonder what it could be. We'll see. Time will tell. Also, along those lines, Ghost of Tsushima developer Sucker Punch Productions is hiring for a multiplayer or is hiring for multiplayer designers for a possible co-op game or mode. That's interesting as well. I don't know if that'll be for the Ghost of Tsushima sequel or if that's for another game altogether. Also, PlayStation Lifestyle reported that Sony is hiring a head of mobile to help adopt popular PlayStation franchises for mobile devices, spare me. Right. <laughs> Ubisoft, <laughs> Ubisoft will host a Ubisoft Forward event during E3 on June the 12th. That does not say event. That is not. It says Evnit. 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 <laughs> also. Uh, yeah. It, what it, what's a covenant mean? <laughs> covenant. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I do my best. I do my fucking best. All right. And finally, Travis, uh, website PlayStation Lifestyle reported a big one. It's a big one. That the Metal Gear, official Metal Gear Twitter account, Travis is teasing a reveal of a Metal Gear Solid 2 remaster, Mm -hmm. possibly as soon as next week, meaning the Mm -hmm. reveal is is coming next week. This is is crazy. There's been rumors for a while now that they're remaking or remastering all the Metal Gear games. Right. And it sounds like they're going to start with two. Um, hey, which is odd, but hey, look, Kojima's still making play, PlayStation games. Yeah, I, so I'm first. That's a, that's a fair point. First of all, I'm interested to see what studio is remastering this. Is it is it Konami? I mean, Konami, I guess, would be doing it. I mean, they have the IP, they have the rights to Metal Gear. But man, this is exciting. It's probably Bend. <laughs> they probably got all those dudes that just got can shit canned from Japan Studio. <laughs> Also, website PlayStation Universe reported that musical narrative-based running game, Aerial Knights Never Yield, will release <laughs> on PlayStation 5 on May 19th. I just, do you know what this is? I, I don't know what this is. No, but, I saw the I saw the picture. Okay. But. I pictured Fuser and like parkour. Oh, yeah. I mean, I guess. Sure. I I mean, it sounds it terrible. Doesn't... I don't want to play it. <laughs> it's got the it's got an underscore in its name. I'm immediately turned off by that. <laughs> Assassin's Creed Valhalla's Wrath of the Druids DLC has been delayed. <laughs> I'm up to May 13th. Wrath of the Druids. Uh, <laughs> Assassin's Creed Valhalla's Ratch of the Druids DLC, ladies and gentlemen. Gosh damn. I'm so I'm getting bad at this. I'm getting bad at this. I don't even proofread anymore. I just typed the motherfucker. It's a, it's it's comical. Fuck it, man. We'll do it live. Fuck it. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Go write it. We'll do it live. Just like that. Just like Bill O'Reilly or whatever. Just throw your pen at the screen and walk off. <laughs> oh man. Also, Sonic, a, uh, let's see here, a Sonic Colors remaster for PlayStation 4 is apparently in the works. I've never even heard of that game, according to a listing from a German voiceover studio. <laughs> My <laughs> God. I, okay. I, love, I love stuff like this because I love seeing where, where the leak is at. Right. A German voiceover studio. What the world. Also, Travis, another big one. PlayStation Universe reported that Battlefield leaker Tom Henderson, who's been busy here lately, has now claimed that this year's game may not come to last-gen systems at all. Good. As according to his sources, he has not heard anything about the PS4 or Xbox One being mentioned in regards to the game. Even when he's mentioned the stuff he's leaked before, like to do some of the stuff they want to do, you can't do that on last-gen anyway. Yeah, he, no he did... Right. He did say at one point that if it was going to come to last gen, that they were going to basically take a bunch of features out. I remember, I remember that being a thing, but it seems like a lot of work. Just make it work on the new generation. Yeah. He's backtracked. So they have to, like somebody obviously is feeding him information and I wonder if they're doing this to like soften the blow that's coming next month because they're going to reveal it in like three or four weeks. Right. 
So I wonder if they're like putting this out here to to, to like yeah. soften the blow. I that hope it doesn't. Sense. I don't. I don't want it to come to PS4. Like it. I don't. I mean, at this point, I'm I'm sick of PlayStation Four games. Like, give me the give me the PS5 games. Let's go. Right. Also, Hitman and Bond developer IO Interactive have, have opened a third studio in Barcelona, Spain. So they're getting serious. Yeah, they are. And, that, and this Bond game is going to be so cool. Like the story is going to be awesome. Mm-hmm. You know, God, it's just going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait. I'm excited to see what they do. That'll be a fun game. Also, a new job listing at Destiny developer Bungie indicates that their new IP will feature competitive multiplayer. Shocker. Uh, several new job listings at Sony Ben Studio have revealed that its new IP will include an open world weapons and vehicles. So nothing earth shattering there. <laughs> so we'll fart. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> nothing earth shattering there, but uh, you know, they're already hiring for the new IP. So we'll see what, uh, what that could be. Website Gamatsu reported that pirate action RPG King of Seas will launch on a PS4 on May 25th. That otherworldly puzzle adventure game Call of the Sea is coming to PS5 and PS4 sometime in May. Can't wait to confuse both of those. Right. Put them right back to back just for you. That WRC 10 was announced and is due out on September the 2nd for PlayStation 4 and PS5. Side-scrolling action platformer Fallen Night will launch on PS4 on June 23rd. 2D anime-inspired survival action game Lost Ruins will release on PS4 in the fourth quarter of this year. Virtual reality time travel adventure game Wanderer will launch on PSVR in the third quarter of this year. Sim Racer F1 2021 will launch on PS4 and PS5 on July 26th, and then it will be the first Codemasters game published under the new EA banner. I'm sure you have something to say about this. Well, you know, I sent you that um, that Reddit post earlier about how like jacked up the prices are in Turkey and Indonesia and Singapore or wherever the other places were. Yeah. And I, that's that's kind of amazing to me. I I would I'll try to I'll try to understand it more for the future. So if it, this comes up again, uh, we could talk about it. But it's a little bit over my head right now. Anyway, how that's even legal? I will say that there are um, there is an in-game currency already for F one twenty one. Here we fucking go, boys. That's what it's called. F one bucks. Uh, no, it's called Bitcoin. <laughs> Oh my god. That is pretty cl- that's that's clever. Yeah. So, um I told you about this yesterday. So there is they've added they've added a, a story mode again where you start mm-hmm. off at F2, so like AAA A mm-hmm. um or League 2, whatever you're going to call it, and you uh, work your way up to F1, you have like a rival you race against. It's kind of like a 2K story mode, but uh, probably less fucking awful. And they have added co-op this year, so like you know, I could basically have a career online or we could have a career online and you could race as my teammate or as my rival, either one you wanted to do. And there's like a skill tree involved when you race. Like, you know, you you, you uh, use your skill points to buy certain upgrades, like, you know, battery life or uh, drivetrain or arrow or whatever. Um, or training to make your driver have better stats or to make your crew better at, you know, doing strategy calls. Yeah. And the cool part is even if we're on the same team, you can still do yours in your own way. Like, you know, hmm. I can't override what you're doing. So that's interesting because, um, you know, I think that, that, that adds some depth to the game that I haven't seen before. Yeah. It, 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 it does sound cool. I'll give you that a co-op story racing game. It does sound neat. I'll give you that. I'll consider it. I'll consider it. I'm not it's making a hard any game. fucking promises. It's a hard game. I, I know. That's, I don't know. That's what turns me off about it. But we'll see. And I'm, I'm not going to play on a will. So. Uh, also, Travis Gamatsu reported that Wasteland 3 story DLC, The Battle of Steel Town, will release on June 3rd. 2D iso- isometric adventure game Beautiful Desolation will launch on PS4 on May 28th. Street skateboarding game Skate City will release on PS4 on May 6th. Roguelite deck builder Rise of the Slime will launch on PS4 and PS5 sometime this spring. They're running out of time. <laughs> Wildlife photography game Beast of Maravilla Island will release on a PS4 sometime in June. Action Adventure RPG Kataria Fables will launch on PS4. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, on PS4 and PS4 sometime in 2021. It should be PS4 and PS5 sometime in 2021. Kataria Kataria Fables <laughs> sounds like a hot tattoo artist. It, it really does. Sounds like something else too, but I won't say. Horror game Angels of Death. Well, what a fucking game. It's coming to PS4 on April 22nd. 
Metroidvania game Ender Lilies, Quietus of the Nights, will launch on PS4 on July 6th. Co-op puzzle game Kiwi, Kiwi, I have no idea, will launch on PS4 and PS5 sometime in August. From New Zealand, is that from New Zealand? <laughs> yeah, it's from down under. Action-adventure game Aztec Forgotten Gods was announced and will release sometime this fall on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. Japanese RPG, Japanese-inspired RPG in the highly anticipated Chris Tells will launch on PS4 and PS5 on July 20th. Skateboarding action platformer Ollie Ollie World was announced and will release sometime this winter on PS4 and PS5. Single-player third-person adventure game Last Stop will launch on PS4 and PS5 sometime in July. Time Loop Murder Mystery Game in the Forgotten City will release this summer on PS4 and PS5. I do think that, that game looks really cool. I need to look at this. I It, it does sound very interesting. The, the art looks cool that I saw on, yeah. the, on the picture or whatever. Yeah, like you're in like this Roman city and like there's like people are golden and for some reason they turn into gold. I haven't figured that part out yet. One of the huh. gameplay walked, I watched eight minutes of gameplay, but it was from last summer. Oh, so yeah. I'm sure a lot of it's changed, but yeah, it, the puzzle, it didn't really answer many questions as to like what you're actually looking for or what the puzzle's trying to tell you. Of course that was a year ago, but um, I am intrigued. Sure. I'll have to look it up. Also, Kamatsu reported that motorbike simulation racing game, Rims Racing will launch on PS4 and PS5 on August 19th. Asymmetric multiplayer horror game Dead by Daylight will get a Resident Evil event in June. First person puzzle game Summertime Madness will come to PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 sometime later this year. Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection will release on PS4 sometime this year as well. Oh. What was that? Was that a ghost or a goblin? That was a ghost and a goblin. <laughs> it makes me think of a wasn't there a Lil Wayne song? Am I going? Am I goblin? What's a goon to a goblin? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Oh, uh, Wayne. Also, Gamasi reported a free to play 3D action game Bleach. Brave Souls. I'd rather drink Bleach <laughs> than play this game. We'll watch on PS4 mm. sometime this year. <laughs> That the PS5 version of hit free-to-play action RPG Genshin Impact will launch on April 28th. And finally, Travis, mm-hmm. Gamatsu reported this absolute treasure. <laughs> that Leisure Suit Larry, Wet Dreams Dry Twice, <laughs> will launch digitally on PS4 on May the 18th. Mm-hmm. And if that you, is all for the news this week. Even if you literally break down that title, I don't know what it means. <laughs> Yes, the, these there are several of these games, and the, all the titles are equally funny. <laughs> anyway, that's all for the news. I'll turn it over to you now for this week's new game releases. On the 12th of April, we had Racing Breakthrough Gaming Arcade. On April 15th, we had Astro Aqua Kitty. Mm-hmm. Saga Frontier Remastered. Savage Halloween. The Dark Side Detective, A Fumble in the Dark. That that's about the only game on this list that I thought looked mildly interesting. Okay. Um, on on the sixteenth we had Alien Destroyer, uh, which I would have loved that if it was if it was uh-huh. called Kitty Destroyer. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, yeah. Um, oh. What a PSN name that would be. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. It is uh, Kitty Destroyer sixty nine. <laughs> following that on the sixteenth we had. Cybus Heart, Seabuck's Heart. I don't know what that says. It's probably a typo. I don't fucking know. I probably typed Uh-oh. it wrong. Well, anyway, following that, we had Superstar Blast. Following that, we had Tricks Infinite. I'm pretty sure that means yeah. tricks. Yeah, I would it's go with that. TRI, the number six. Don't try to trick me with your tricky titles. Following that, the last one we have here is Tribal Pass. Yeah. Okay. And that's all for the new game releases this week. Uh, I'm probably going to pick up Astro Aqua Kitty. No joke. It's a it's a Vita game. Uh, probably going to pick that up eventually before the store closes. So is love that, that Astro Aqua them? Kitty. Uh, I don't know about that, but it's a, um, I don't know how to describe it. Uh, kind Awful. of like, no, kind of like, Re- <laughs> kind of like Rezo Gun, you know, like a side scrolling shoot 'em up type of thing. You know, you're in a little spaceship type of deal. I don't know. It looks interesting. Yeah. Well, you, you always want your kitty to be awkward. That's right. Uh, yes, you do. All right, Travis, let's wrap things up here. 
by uh, talking about what we're going to be looking forward to, looking forward to playing in the week ahead. What's uh, what's on your mind? What do you got? What are you planning? I've gotten into this thing with FIFA where I like to um, like sell these guys I don't play very much. Like, mm-hmm. I just want to get as much money as I can out of them. And the funny part is, is I don't ever buy players, so I just. I just want to have all this fake money that I don't use. It doesn't make any sense. Uh-huh. But right now I have like $76 million in profit. <laughs> I've done you're, nothing with it. You're getting ready to have enough to buy a piece of Epic Games. Yes, I am. So anyway, I'll probably keep doing that because it's just fun to do. Um, I want to try this enlisted mode that we re- that I read about earlier. I want to see what, what that's about. Yeah. I, I think enlisted has some legs maybe in there somewhere. Um I know there's two other boards or two other areas we haven't gotten to play yet because they aren't on this um, beta version. Um, I think one is Berlin, and the screenshots from it look look interesting, and the other one maybe is Tunisia, and it looks pretty cool too. So I think that I think that would be um, just. To, I just want to try the other mode out. I would like to have another crack at Normandy. We did play that map once, and it was an absolute disaster trying it to was. get onto the beach i would like to at least capture a point and see what else there is that that's, that might be a lot to ask probably and then um i have a race on wednesday night it's we do we race every wednesday at nine nine o'clock eastern i have no idea where we are this week i should probably practice so i don't qualify second to last again i'm really good i'm i'm, I'm telling you man i'm a better racer i just got to quit spinning out um anyway i enjoy doing that it's a lot of fun and we're uh you know we all I might stream it this week. I didn't stream it last week because one, I hadn't raced in forever and I knew I was going to crash a bunch, but I wasn't sure how the league would be because we all talk in a party while we race. Mm. It's just funny to listen to the other guys and um, the guy that won bitched like the entire race. Uh, <laughs> but he, he's from Sweden. What do you expect, right, guys who, who are from over there? That sounds like a Swedish person, right? I don't, really, I don't know. But anyway. Um, so I might I might actually stream that just just because I don't know, I have I have a blast racing with those guys we have a good time so um, it's a nice little little community we have there but that's that's probably all I got on the radar. Yeah, I anticipate playing a little bit more FIFA and Battlefield Five as usual, and I'm sure we'll mix in some more Zombie Army a little bit, and I'm I'm fine with trying and list it again. Um, I, now that I know there's another mode, I guess we should definitely try that out and see if that you know, speaks to me a little bit more, but I, uh, I'm, I don't know. I'm a little down on that. I'll be honest, but I do want to try the other mode now that I know that I exi- that exists. Uh, yeah. The other it's... mode gave it more legs for me. Yeah. The one we've been playing, it just seems lifeless. Like I feel like everybody Ooh, that I kill a is, a, yeah, I feel like everybody that I kill is a robot and they so definitely they are. <laughs> yeah. And they definitely look and feel and move like robots. And that, I mean, that's not fun to me. So right. the AI is not very smart. Yeah, no. So if we can play real people, nothing but real people, then that's perfect. Uh, so we need to figure that out. Uh, and then the last thing really is I'm going to play some more Days Gone. Um, I'm running out of time on that game, though, because Returnal was out on the 30th, so got a couple yeah. more weeks. But Your days are almost my, gone. <laughs> my days are almost gone. That's right. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I have no idea how far I am in the game. I feel like it's not very far. Uh, but I'm going to keep going. I'm going to see, I'm going to get as far as I can. And I mean, I may get to a point, I may get to a point of no return. Like if I get to like 70% done, I'm just going to finish the game. Like there's no point, you know, of not going or not finishing it then if I get to that point. But didn't you get stuck on an I impossible want to understand. part before? Yeah. One of my first playthroughs, I got stuck on an impossible part and I kept dying because I would like set off an alarm and like 50 zombies would come and overrun me basically well I, i'm well past that part well past that part i was in a much better place trying to play that because before when i was trying to play it i was ready to play the game be d- and somewhat be done with it and move on to i think spider-man or something like that something else was on the radar but you know i've got nothing else on the radar so to speak right now until returnal so but nothing's going to keep me from playing returnal but when i get on if it's just me i've got days gone so i'm you know i can kind of just dedicate myself a little bit more to it i don't get as frustrated so to speak but i don't know i want to understand i want to understand but i still think it's just above average but we'll see if my opinion changes as i get further along here and uh i think that's it travis so we'll wrap it up we'll get out of here thank you guys for listening and if you enjoy the show don't forget to subscribe so that we'll be right there in your podcast feed for you 
on Monday. Monday morning, 6 a.m. Also, if you'd be so kind as to leave us a, rate, a rating, maybe a few stars there on your podcast service or a review if you want to take the time to, you know, write some words about us. That'd be appreciated as well. Even if it's a bad one, I guess, go ahead, go for it if you really feel like it. If you're listening on YouTube, leave us a thumbs up or a comment. Uh, maybe subscribe. That always helps. And finally, if you have a friend who you think may enjoy a podcast where they can get all of the week's PlayStation news in less than 90 minutes every week, then by all means, send them our way. We would much appreciate it. Two big, two big points. If you, Uh-oh. if you know somebody in another country, we want to get to 20. We're at 19. Fair point. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what country you're in. Just, just pick the other country. We might already have them, but it's okay. Tell them anyway. Yeah. And the other thing, tweet them, tweet at Jason Schreier, and then put the timestamp where we made fun of him. <laughs> and just let him know. Because I would love for him to come on and tell me how stupid I am. And then I could just let him talk. Because let's be honest, I don't care. Yeah. I hope, I hope one day that we're moderately big enough to where we can have some people on as guests that we can talk with on the show. Like Colin from Sacred Symbols, for instance, or you know, some some other people, other people like that. I, that would really thrill me we could really talk about me and colin could really bond over our like you know just oh yeah empathetic view of life like we just don't care that you know that we could really bond over that nerds. yeah you history yeah. majors yeah that'd be fun yeah uh so anyway uh also last thing here if you want to talk with us hit us up on twitter at the dual sense pod and our youtube if you want to check out some of uh our streams or clips or episodes if you prefer to use youtube you can do that as well at the dual sense podcast and with that we'll get out of here you guys take care have a good week stay safe we'll talk to you next week see ya